Tully Moor is one of the great 18th century landscapes in Ireland, but originally it had its origin as a deer park created in the 1720s for the Hamilton family. And the first building they built at the time was in the 1820s when they built the Old Bridge, and it was Viscount and Limerick, who had been educated in the continent, and he'd gone on the grand tour, and he had very grand ideas, which uh, he did eventually uh, implement, in a sense, by employing um, as his tutor a chap called Thomas Wright, who was a, a well-known mathematician, a well-known architect, a well-known landscape designer. And when he was in Ireland, he came to Tullymore, and he put forward lots of designs for garden buildings. Uh, and created the landscape much as we see today. Wonderful bridges like the Foley's Bridge uh, and other buildings built in a distinctive style with local material with granite and also with these peculiar roundish boulders called bapstones, which are, shaped, which are named after a bread and which all come from Newcastle, which the Hamiltons also owned at that time. And they come up from the shore. One of the most distinctive uh, architectural features of Tollymore is the Barbican Gate, which is the entrance in from Newcastle. And uh, this again is absolutely Thomas Wright. There are uh, quite a number of drawings of different gates that Thomas Wright designed in England for various places. And they're all very similar to the Barbican Gate. It's sometimes also said that Thomas Wright was inspired uh, when he created the Barbican Gate by the gates in Tredroda in County Louth. They're very characterized by these uh, castellated tops and all the little uh, loops. And uh, looking through the arch, you can see this wonderful 19th century plantation of cedars leading up to the great house. The house itself was the focus, of course, of the park. Uh, and unfortunately, in 1952, when this was all handed over uh, to the Department of Agriculture, it was demolished because it was considered too expensive to maintain. So when the first Viscount uh, made this into a deer park, uh, one of the first things he did, and he did the first building he actually built here in Tollymore, was the bridge. 1726, he built the old bridge. It's a substantial, big bridge that allowed access to a hunting lodge. It was built on the south side of the river that's gone now completely. It was only a wooden structure. It's nothing special as a bridge, but in the 19th century, uh, the Earls of Roden built footbridges. I don't know why they did it, but they built uh, suspension bridges, metal suspension bridges on both sides of the old bridge. One of the picture postcard views of Tullymore is this humpback bridge rising out of the rocks of the Shimno River with these very characteristic bap stones, which are such a, also such a feature of Tullymore, and it's known as Foley's Bridge. Again, an inspiration of Thomas Wright. Um, and built in uh, 1787 and dedicated to Harriet Foley, uh, who was a niece of uh, the second Earl of Crombrazel. He had married a Foley. And these humpback bridges are very much a feature of these landscape parks in the late 18th century. The humpback, the very exaggerated curve, the round arch to give the bridge a sort of picturesque appearance in the landscape. It's very much an example of a piece of architecture that literally is growing out of the rocks of the river. And you can see the way the rocks rise up each side and the river flowing underneath it. Not far from down here is the Ivy Bridge, which is another very distinctive bridge built in 1780 in this case. Uh, sometimes and historically known as Clan Brazel Bridge, and in fact there's a big inscription with a C on it for the name of the, the, the title of the family, and it's distinctive with these four little pinnacle towers at each corner. So again, uh, just a piece of fancy, almost certainly again Thomas Wright inspired, if not indeed designed. We will see in the Ivy Bridge the use of these oval stones rising up. They're not a picturesque thing, they're just to keep carriages away from walls or from the sides or features. And indeed, you see them in many domains throughout Ireland. We're here uh, on the Hilltown Road near Bryansford um, uh, with three Lord Limerick Follies just beside us. This one here sort of resembles a spire, um, but um, though it is a folly, it is in fact uh, a boundary marker between the Hamilton and the Hill Estates. And in fact, Lord Limerick could have put in as a boundary marker a very utilitarian stone or something. But instead of that, he built this absolutely amazing structure. The little structure is very architectural. It's hexagonal. 
It's um, got a cone on the top. It's uh, got what we call bap stones, which are located around the outside, and they sort of form battlements. They are properly designed structures. They've been there now for over 250 years. Thomas Wright, who was the inspiration behind these structures, they were probably designed by Lord Limerick and himself together in about 1745, 46, that sort of time, but probably built about 10 years later. Thomas Wright was a very interesting man. He designed a lot of um, wonderful landscapes and uh, Tully Moore is obviously one of them that he had a, a hand in. He was also a mathematician and an astronomer. Um, and if you look at lots of the follies, um, you'll see that there's very strong geometric shapes in them. Cubes and pyramids and drums and upturned cones and so forth. Um, and it's almost like uh, something that you know children would put together a structure when they're playing and that makes them interesting, exciting, eccentric um, and I think absolutely delightful. One of the bridges that Thomas Wright certainly had something to do with and was built in, probably in the 1770s was the Horn Bridge which in the original layout of the landscape was just below the house. Today, of course, it's all woodland, so you get a completely different context. It has castellated parapets on it, it has blind arches. Uh, and when the Forestry Service took this place over, the Tolly Moor, in the, in the 1960s, they put a path underneath the bridge and paths each side, but originally it was only access across the main bridge itself. And in general, the atmosphere, like many of Wright's buildings, you know, they're quite distinctive, and indeed you could compare it, I mean, with the, with the Barbican Gate coming into the domain. Now, although Wright was here in the 1740s, it's almost certain that he provided plans right through to the, to the 1770s. He didn't design everything. The Hermitage, for example, is not by Thomas Wright. It's a typical Hermitage of that period. In the second half of the 18th century, many picturesque landscapes had curious uh, rustic features, grottos and hermitages, little rustic re retreats. They did, in a few cases, actually employ hermits in some, some of these places, but they were always set out to look as if a hermit had lived there. And this is a very good example. Here is designed overlooking the Shimna River on the cliffs here, rather like a little cave over the river. And it was accessed in the 19th century, and indeed in the 18th century too, by a wooden bridge, and then in the 19th century by uh, um, a, a metal um, a suspension bridge, which alas is no longer there today. It was built by 1770 by uh, Lord Cranbrassel, the second Earl of Cranbrassel, in honour of his great friend, the rather eccentric Lord Montemar. I don't know if Montemar actually ever came here, but it's just an excuse, I think, to have, to have built a grotto or a hermitage overlooking the river here in this position. They could have had steps down to the river, and in fact, they may well have used the river to swim or as a plunge bath or a cold bath, which is a very popular thing in the late 18th century. So hermitage were quite predictable features. They were always designed as rustic, almost growing out of the ground with round arches and exposed stones looking, you know, really rustic. And this is exactly it with the round arches. And it has this sort of domed roof, but it's, it's supposed to melt into the landscape. Uh, you wouldn't hardly see it and originally it would have had a little hermit's table and an hourglass, you know, as if the hermit had lived there. This is the idea, so the ladies and the mental would come down from the big house and they would sort of imagine that the hermit was living there still and there was a clump of trees on the other side of the river that blocked his view so that the hermit was supposed to contemplate on things that hermits were supposed to contemplate on. And the murmuring of the river, of course, is a wonderful sound echoing the mind, as it were, of the hermit. And another feature that you see as you're walking around the, the domain, of course, is the Lion's Mouth Fountain, as it's called, this rather Regency. It's essentially about 1810, 1815, again, the Napoleonic period, where the water would pour out of a lion's mouth. And there's a lovely photograph uh, taken in the 1860s or 70s of the two women of the house so getting water from the, from, the, from the lion's mouth. The obelisk is a much later feature. as very much part of the landscape park. Uh, built uh, by the Earl of Jocelyn, the, the Earl of Roden, who's a Jocelyn, in memory of his second son, who was killed during the Napoleonic Wars. So one of the most dramatic uh, features of all of Tully Moor, perhaps because it's the postcard view, as it were, is the Bransford Gate. This was originally the main entrance into the park and domain. 
and it was built in really towards the end of the second Clanbrassel's era in 1786. And it's very distinctive of Wright's work with wings, um, with flying buttresses, uh, castellations, and in this particular case, of course, it also has the famous bap stones as well stuck all over it. So it's a very distinctive gate entrance. There's one of a view of the mountains with the tree cloaked mountains, all planted with larch in the late 18th century, and of course, the view also of the Clan Brazil Barn built in the 1750s with the steeple built in the 1780s. This very distinctive feature of the whole of Tolly Moor. A beautifully designed landscape, um, incomparable really in, in Ireland. So the second Earl of Crumbrazzle, when he took over from his father in the 1750s, he landscaped the ground, so all these wonderful open meadows today that you see today are very carefully designed. He planted millions of trees, large trees on the hill slopes, being one of the first land owners in Ireland to do this massive planting. And then down by the rivers, he designed these fr frivolous little follies, which were to ornament the landscape, which was in many respects ahead of its time. At that time, in the mid 18th century, they were into Burke's idea of the sublime, the idea of the terrifying, uh, the picturesque, which is the pretty, in a sense, the search of the, the, the charming, the picturesque, comes in much later, but this essentially is a picturesque landscape, so it's very much ahead of its time.